Hey everybody, it's Joe from JoePro.co. Today, this job I'm on, I've uh, been asked to strip, remove all the wallpaper on two rooms. This is the first room. You'll see, you want a professional job because obviously, when this was done originally, whether it was done by the homeowner or whether it was done by a dodgy tradesman, it wasn't done very well. Just want to show you. Overlappage going on there, that's not great, is it? <laughs> yeah, you never do that. Never overlap a finished paper unless it's uh, a splice one. You certainly don't leave it overlapping like that. So, I uh, just want to show you a few faulty parts. See, there you go, you can see the, the seams of uh, bust there, usually caused by bad prep or simply just using packet paste too thin uh, not strong enough to hold the seams down or when they're pasting they just don't they simply just don't make sure that the edges are covered and if you look at my videos i'll show you exactly how you do that so we'll take a look if you wish to choose to do that so like i say that's uh room one so just to show you quickly now before i show you the next room a lot of people uh will look at this and they might think oh let's get the steamer out the steamer will do a good job of this tackling this but like i say on other videos that i have done i explain the process of stripping wallpaper today simply you just get in, in the corners Sorry about this, I keep pressing the wrong button. And you simply tear off, dry the top layer. You don't get the steamer out. I'm trying to do this without touching them. So you just get the edge like so. Just simply just pull it. And it's always a joy when it comes off like this but if you've got experience you tend to know which ones are going to do this and which ones are not going to do this so that's in here pretty much sorted and then i will use this little beauty and just a pump sprayer but not a cheap one you know uh, pump sprayers the cheap pump sprayers tend to be uh, cheap plastic parts, they don't last as long. Whereas on the this particular one, you'll pay a little bit more for it. Poselock Pro, it has metal parts where others will use plastic. It will last that bit longer, well, much longer. Uh, this particular one I have had now for about three to four years and it's never let me down. So yeah, what I'll be doing is I'll be soaking these, the lining paper, which is behind it and that will just come off with two or three soaks, no problem. Right, so as you can see, all the top layers coming off nicely. I've been at it now about an hour, if that. And it all just tears off in big lengths, generally. So as you can see, it's very fast and efficient, which is one what the customer wants, or if you're doing it yourself, you wanna get done as soon as possible don't you so the quickest and easiest way is always the best formula now while we're on this i just want to show you something else and this is what really really gets an eye wick really decorators us in the trails professionals we tend to get annoyed by stupid little things and this stupid little thing is just bits of debris all over the ceiling and we call these nibs and I don't know whether you can see them very well on the camera but for us or for me that's not really acceptable so the best way to tackle this oh I'll just explain the reason for this and this is simply just 
uh, contaminated paint. So bits of dust, bits of fluff off cheap rollers, getting into the paint and then laying it off. And you can't always see them really obviously when the paint first goes on, but then when the paint dries and flattens, they become more exposed. So I've got the scraper in my hand because I'm using it for the paper. One way of doing this is simply scraping them off. So, but what I will be doing is I'll get the uh, mechanical sander, the orbital sander out, the Merca, when I've done all the other prep, the stripping and so on, and I'll whiz over it with the sander. 120 grit, just whiz over all the sealing like I would anyway, just to smooth it off, denib it, and to give it a key for the emulsion that's going on the ceiling and there may be a little bit of fill in here just spotted around this ceiling rose there'll be a little bit of uh, easy fill going all the way around the perimeter of that ceiling rose I'll loosen it off and then I'll be putting the easy fill on and then I'll be screwing it back on obviously I'll be taking this off while any painting's being done I don't want any flicks on anything so everything has to be removed Right, so here we have it. As you can see, been round and soaked it with the garden sprayer. Only took one good soak, to be fair, so it depends on how well the paper has been stuck in the first place. Not very good on this occasion. The type of paste, I presume it was uh, flake paste, so it's weaker, less stronger uh, wallpaper adhesive. It has more water content, meaning it has less glue. So it's just not as strong generally. So yeah, so pretty easy to get off the backing paper. One soak all around the room by the time you've gone round. It's then time to start stripping so it comes off nice and easy. So I'll just show you how easy this paper comes off. So don't never be tempted, like I've said on other videos, never be tempted to leave the backing paper on because what it will do is, you can see the bubbles there. That is what's gonna happen when you put paper on top of it. Even when it's dry, the paper soaks it and then it will bubble off and a lot of these bubbles will not uh, stick back. That's the issue you have when you wallpaper over wallpaper. So guys, that's how easy it is. Guys and girls, that is how easy it is. As simple as that. So I'm not going to bore you and uh, keep with you while I'm doing Right everybody. It's now about 10 past 10 a.m. Starting time was approximately 5 past 10 past 8 this morning. Now, as you can see, all the room, the top paper and the lining paper is all stripped. As you can see. Now, what I'm going to do is, these two rooms I'm on today, I'm doing at the same time. So, I will, it's pretty much identical, the next room. So, I will go and strip that. We'll give this chance to dry out. And then I will go through all the next jobs and procedures on the next phase of this room. So, uh, Hi I'll everybody, see you whilst shortly. on the other room, I just wanted to show you something that's come up. Now, if you have a look at this ceiling in this room, it's been re skimmed. But what's happened is, and which you should never ever do, uh, it's ridiculous really, is have a wall re skimmed. A ceiling re-skimmed when you're planning on stripping the wallpaper and having it redecorated so as you can see while the papers on it goes nicely up against the paper big mistake as the papers being stripped off it's taking the plaster with it as you can see there oh dear oh dear oh dear mrs. Jones right so this room's been relined just like the other one, so it's not going to be a major issue for me. But I will explain it to the client that uh, in future, if you're planning on doing any re skimming of any surfaces that butt up against other surfaces that are not being skimmed, 
you must make sure the wallpaper comes off first. Any stripping comes off first so the skim can go up against the wall and not the wallpaper. <laughs> oh dear. Right, I will uh, be back in the other room in a second. Right everyone, so <clears throat> we're at the stage now. It is approximately 11.40 a.m. So it's taken a little over three and a half hours to strip both rooms using the process that I've explained. So as you can see, the room is fully stripped, but I'm gonna go through some of, go through some of the things that I'm gonna be um, doing next. Uh, so it's all prep based, still lots of prep to do. So I'll start off by showing you the first job. I'm gonna be punching holes. So anything like that, the plugs will come out, any nails, anything that's protruding, will get punched in and filled over, wood filler on them, and uh, easy fill on things like this. As you can see, you've got raw plugs. They need, so what I'll do with that is I'll uh, put a screw in there and then get some grippers and pull the screw back out and it will pull the plug out with it, leaving the hole. Now any holes, any imperfections on the wall area, on the ceilings, I will use Easy Fill 20 today. And if it's warm enough, there will be a small chance that I'll get them all fit, fit, uh, sanded smooth as well. So anything like that gets filled, anything like that gets denipped, scraped off. I'm actually going to be using my orbital sander. So uh, I'm going to be denibbing de everything first because what you don't want to do is any rough parts on the wall will obviously affect you when you're smoothing your filler on. So you have to denib first. So that's what I'll be doing with my sander. So all these, everything here you see, will be easy filled, which is Jip Rock Easy Filler. It's, um, I'll mix it smooth and it's a bit like um, a plaster, but when it dries, it's not as, um, it's a little bit more porous and a little bit easier to sand. It's not as hard as multi-finish. But it's ideal for a decorator because we can sand it smooth. So all that will get denipped, scraped off. As you can see, there's a little bit of dampness still in the wall, so we'll have to wait until these are fully dry, give it another half hour or so. So when I've filled all the holes, the next stage after that... Oh yeah, let me just show you some imperfections on the ceiling. All of these, that'll get undercut and filled, that crack. Denibbed, and so on. Now, as you can see, they had wardrobes fitted in this area, and this part of the ceiling has been re-skimmed. Now, it is very, very rare, with all the good intentions of the plasterer, that I won't have to do any sanding because he would have wet that edge and feathered it off perfectly smooth with the existing ceiling. But 90% of the times when I feel it with my hands, my fingers, there will be rough edges and they won't, it won't quite feather in perfectly 90% of the check times. So I will double check that before I uh, miscoat it. And obviously when the mist coat goes on, it will show up any imperfections in the ceiling. I mean, there's no point in filling now. It has to be sealed first with a mist coat. So there you have it. So what I'll do is I'll do all the prep now, and then I'll show you what I've done. Sorry, one thing I did mention, or forget to mention, I should say, is all the woodworks, so all the skirting boards are being done. So all the woodwork will have to be sanded. So I do the straight part at the bottom with the sanding pad and then I do it by hand on the top bit. Now as you can see, there will be some filler required along the tops of the skirts and then anything that's left over will be corked in. So I will show you that when I'm done. Um, can I just say, that this floor isn't staying. 
the customer's actually decided to lift this up after the decorating's been done. Um, obviously I have explained that that's probably not the best way of going about it. And this trim as well, I did mention that this trim will need to come off if this carpet going down because the carpet probably won't come up to the line of the skirting board and that could be an issue. But the customer's asked me to leave it on. I have explained the potential downfall to that and he knows. But he said he's willing to take the risk, so fair enough. There's not more I can do on that. Um, so there you go, showing you the woodwork. And obviously the door's going to get sanded back as well. And keyed, and we've got a door here as well. Right, everybody. So all the filling has been done. Well, most of it. Probably find something else as I go around. But as you can see, All imperfections on the wall are filled with easy filler and then this will get sanded smooth and level with the rest of the wall tomorrow once this dries. I won't have time today. So as you can see the top of the skirts have been corked. Everything's been sanded and filled. And I'll show you something now, which makes a big, big difference. Like I was saying earlier, the D nibbing. Yeah, there's no nibs on that now. You will not see any nibs on that. And if I do find any, I'll double check that tomorrow when I do all the sanding. And if there's any I've missed, I'll sort them out. So that's it, guys. Um, The other room is also being done. As you can see, I've filled in the woodwork as well. All the holes, I've been given instructions, all the holes to be filled. I've not decided whether I've had, they're having curtains or blinds, but for now, everything gets filled and then they'll sort out the holes, obviously, if uh, they do have anything put up on the windows. But this is ready now for stage two lining on day two. So let's get on to day two. No, we're still on day one and what I've done is before I finish I've decided to put a mist coat on the bare plaster like I mentioned earlier. So there we have it. That's a sealer coat, mist coat. If you'd like to look at my videos um, on mist coating and sealing it goes into more detail on how and why we do this. So um, I'll just quickly show you the other room as well. And that's a full ceiling mess coated. As you can see. So now I'm going to pack up and I will see you in one second, starting with day two. Morning everyone, we're on day two now and it's, I've just sanded all the filler, as you can see, it's all sanded back, gone around with a hoover to get any debris up, any dust and then I've given it all a, a wipe over to, um, with a tack rag just to denib and get any dust off the walls, the surface that I'm going to be lining. So, I'm not going to go through a lot of detail, I'm not going to... Uh, carry on with the video through the lining because I've got other videos you can check out if you want to see in more detail how that's done and I'll, I'll put a link on this video if that helps and um, I just want to go through the papering kit that I'm going to need for lining these two rooms so first of all so first of all we have the uh, wallpaper hanging brush and that's just to smooth out and remove any air bubbles that get trapped behind the paper whilst applying. This is also a smoother or a, I think they call this a three in one tool. I also use this to smooth out the edges of the paper and I also use it for cutting and trimming the edges off the paper. So I have both of those. A spare snap off blades, trimming knife, which I obviously use, and this trimming knife, 
has individual blades which when they get blunt you snap the end one off and then use the new one so they're very handy a uh, pair of pinchers and this is to snap off the blades a pencil and that's to mark uh, where I'm going to be hanging the wallpaper and plan out the room and also get measurements etc and then obviously the tape measure which I use to measure to get the measurements in the first place so that's my whole papering kit there uh, I've also got lining paper, a sew, wallpaper paste I use these clever Worcester Sherlock hybrid um, they're like in between a tray and a scuttle they hold more paint than a normal tray and less than a scuttle but this is all I ever need on domestic jobs so I use one of these for purposely for uh, when I'm pet wallpapering and pasting and that there sleeve is a long pile sleeve also set of spirit levels different lengths and that's to mark the horizontal and vertical lines when wallpapering and that's pretty much it that's my wallpapering kit everybody so um we'll quickly go on to the next area right so we're on day two it's about 10 15 in the morning a.m sorry we're on day three now so what i've done is i've come in this morning this room was completed yesterday and I've come in this morning and I've finished off this room as you can see it's all lined now so next part of the job today is the ceiling so I've already miscoated the ceilings and double rolled back rolled and I'm going to be using a new product today and uh, this product I've been asked to uh, do a little bit of a review on so I'll just integrate it into this video for the week's work and it's this stuff that I'm using and it's a new product that only came out a couple of weeks ago I was actually given this about three or four weeks ago to test and it's Johnson's Trade Perfect Matte and the idea of this paint um, compared to other paints is that this can be touched up weeks months a year down the line apparently it won't show up any flashing it won't show up that you've touched it in it dries perfectly flat and smooth and that includes the colors from what Johnson's have told me um, it eliminates visible application marks with the roller because they all flatten down so apparently it is a flawless, perfect finish. So only time will tell. I'm going to use it for the first time today. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and open the tin. Right, so on opening the tub, um, white-wise, um, it says it's brilliant white. Um, like a lot of these other products, including Ticarilla and things like that, are actually, they claim to do the same thing uh, with their uh, anti-reflex too. Now with this one, again, it doesn't quite look as brilliant white as, say, their own Cover Plus. Um, but we'll see how it dries when it goes on. But it tends to be the case with these types of paints. They don't tend to be quite as brilliant in your face white. But like I say, we'll see. Uh, it says that recoil time is two to four hours and it's dry with what in one to two hours now. Today's quite a warm-ish day. It's quite humid as well. So we'll see how long it does take today. Hopefully it will only take, say, we'll go somewhere in the middle and try and apply after three hours. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, give it a stir. Now stirring it, now stirring this product does seem very thick and it does say at the back it is quite thick. It does say on the on the, tit, on the tub that you can for porous surfaces you can thin it up to 10%. Now I think I'm gonna probably thin this about 5% just so it flows out a little bit easier 
I think, because it does seem just that tad too thick in the tub. So that's what I will do. So I'll go ahead and thin it. I'll get it on the ceiling and we'll see how we go with that. Right, now I almost forgot the reason I've chosen to use this product on this particular job. Now I don't know whether you'll be able to see it at the moment. Now the customer, this has been previously painted this ceiling uh, in this room and you can see where there used to be wardrobes on that wall and then they got a plasterer in to come and re-skim above where the wardrobes used to be. So as you can see there's a join where he's had to go up to the old plaster. I hope you can see it on here um, and it never, very, very rarely um, goes perfectly so you can not so there might be a slight deviation in the angle um, compared to the original ceiling uh, sometimes the joint isn't perfect when they feathered it in now obviously that's my job to make the feathering in and the joint perfect but what I haven't done is re-skimmed to get it level where it meets so you'll always, when the light comes in from these two windows here on a bright day, they've complained that it shows up. Now, they said to me, it doesn't matter, Joe, you know, um, we've put up with it for so long, just put the paint up, that's all you can do. But then I come across this new product and thought, you know what, let's see if this product actually fixes this issue. So it's critical light coming in them through two windows there behind me and then showing up uh, where these two plastering jobs meet up. So we're going to put two coats on and see if it alleviates that problem. It might be difficult to see it on a video, but I will confirm whether I'm happy with the results. Um, and you may be able to see the difference anyway. So we'll have to see. Right, so it's now quarter to 12 midday. And I've put a coat on both room ceilings. So my first impressions are the paint goes on very, very smoothly. It's a joy to put on. So that's the first thing. The other thing is it is a brilliant white product. Um, coming out of the paint kettle, it did stand out a lot whiter than it did in the tub. So obviously that was just down to the bad light when I was looking inside the tub earlier. So, it is a brilliant white. We'll see how it dries, but it probably is on par with Cover Plus. Maybe not quite as brilliant white, but it is a decent brilliant white. It does pass as a brilliant white, I'd say, up to now. So, I mean, I can only go off what I can see right now. Obviously, I will take another look when it's completely dry on the second coat. But if I look, one of the things that did stand out on the tin was the fact that it gets rid of application marks. Now, with all good intentions, I mean, and I'm using a good quality Hamilton Perfection medium pile roller sleeve, that's a 15 inch there. With all good intentions, you know, you can, you can uh, thin the paint down, you can help it flow that little bit easier. Um, you can do all sorts of stuff. You can put conditioners in your paint, which I don't think a lot of people do, to be honest, in emulsion. Um, but it's really, really difficult to get that stipple that you get with uh, when you're applying paint with a roller sleeve. So, what I'll be interested to see is if these stipple marks here do actually flatten off when it dries. Because at the moment, looking at it, obviously it's still wet. It's only been on about an hour, if that, about 45 minutes. Um, at the moment, it looks like a standard emulsion that I'd normally use. So uh, this will be very, very interesting to see. I mean, to be honest, if this, if this product does ex the same as what all the other products that I use, I use McPherson's Eclipse, I use Cover Plus, I use Dulux Trade, I use Armstead Trade, you know, and, and they're all the same. If you look close enough, you've got the stipple marks. It's nearly impossible 
to get rid of them because they peak, individually peak. So it's not just like a very, very, very thin layer of paint that it's got to flatten off. So I won't go into too much detail and bore the pants off you. But that's what I'll be looking for. And that's uh, on top of this, which I want to try and hide when the light comes in. I mean, at the moment, the first coat pretty much looks like a standard paint to me as it's gone on there. And you can still see it. But as you know, when paint dries, it goes more solid. And we'll see what the results are then. So we'll just take a look in a sec. Right, so that's the second coat on the ceilings and the first coat on the woodwork done. As you can see, it includes the rad as well. So that leaves both coats on both rooms tomorrow and then the final coat on the woodwork and the job should be completed towards the end of day four. So as you can see, it's not completely dry yet. It's done a pretty good job of that uneven surface. We'll have a look in the morning. I'll just quickly show you the other room. There you have it. There's the ceiling completed. Very nice. That's the Johnson's Perfect Mat on there. I've just done the rad, the woodwork, the window board, skirts I've had the first coat on. So it's the same in here, two coats on the walls and then final coat on the woodwork. So in a second we'll be on day four.